<clears throat> Hello and welcome to our voice controlled LED presentation. Today we have Valentina Montero, me, and my partners, Kirkland and John Romero. So uh, when we begin to develop the ideas for our project and all of that, we have to take into consideration the feasibility analysis. And we broke it down into seven steps that later turned into questions. So the first question is technical feasibility. Does the technology exist? Is it available locally? And can it be obtained? Next, we have resources feasibility. Do we have sufficient skills? Do we have enough amount of people? Uh, then we have economic feasibility, which is do we have enough money to carry out the project? Then we have schedule feasibility, which is do we have enough time to do the project and to figure out new things? Then we have cultural feasibility, which is will the project be socially accepted and will it have a positive impact on the people locally and globally? Also, we have legal feasibility, which is are there any laws being broken or any potential crimes that could be done because of the project? And then we have marketing feasibility, which is will the general public accept the product once, it's, once it hits the market? So here we have a chart for the technical feasibility. Uh, we have a couple of attributes and we gave each attribute a score from one through five one being the least and one being the most. Then we have a reason why. And if it was a low score, we would give it a solution. So does the technology exist? We give it a score of five because yes, the uh, components do exist. We only have to build it. Is it available today? Yes, some components are currently unavailable, but some are available. The ones that are unavailable, we have to get them from another place, but we just have to order the parts. And then can it be obtained locally? We gave it a five because the majority of the parts are available locally. And we have a total score of 14. And if we divide that by three, it would give us a seven point, I mean, a 4.7. Then we have resource feasibility, which is do we have enough skill to carry out the project? We do, so we gave it a five. And all the members have experience with these types of projects. Do we have enough hardware skills? We gave it a four because even though we do have experience doing this, um, it was something very new to us, but we know everything about the circuits and it was pretty easy to put it together. Then we have, do we have enough people for the project? We do, uh, so we gave it a five. We are three members in the team and we think that's enough. And do we have enough equipment? We also gave that a five because yes, we do have enough equipment. We have been able to get all of the equipment that we need and we have been able to successfully put it together. So we have a total score of 19 and then the average is seven point, I mean, 4.75. Next, we go on to the economic feasibility and does the project fall under the established budget constraints? Yes, so a five and all the parts are within our budget. Is there economic risk? We give it a five because the risk is very low. So since we, we didn't spend so much money on the project, there's not much risk. And our total was 10 and the average was five. Next, we go on to schedule feasibility. And what are the chances of meeting intermediate milestones? We give it a five because we keep doing Zoom meetings, to be able to make sure that we have the next step ready. Then we have, what are the chances of meeting the PDR requirements of the project? We also gave it a five. This is before we start building anything and we communicate daily to make sure that all the design are, is ready and then that all the parts are ready and then we can put it together. And then what are the chances of meeting the CDR requirements of the project? which is after we actually put it together and once it's ready for market. And we also gave it a five because we have worked meticulously to achieve everything in the project and to clear every single step so that we can proceed. The total was a 15 and we have an average of five. The culture of visibility. So will the product be accepted by local culture? Yes, I think it will. We give it a five. And it's because there's a lot of Americans with 
any disabilities or special needs that need this type of product to be able to help them with anything they need. Will there be a positive impact on global culture? We give it a five because we do believe so. And like I said, there's American people who need special assistance. And like Americans, there's also people around the world who also need this. Will this product have a local impact? We give it a five. Yes, and our product is meant to be produced by companies that abide by any certain rules. So we think that these companies will be able to take on this product and produce it. And then will this product have a global impact? We also gave it a five. We think yes, because it could be a revolutionary early alert system. Our total was a 20 and our average was a five. The legal visibility. Is the product legal? We give it a five because lights and voice recognition systems are not illegal as long as they're not in any uh, form of stolen design. And as far as we know, our design is not illegal. We came up with it and we have checked and there's nothing like it in the market. Uh, laws that could be impeding the project. We gave it a five. There are no laws that could get the team in any legal trouble for the product and laws that could be limiting the project. We also give it a five because there's no laws that are limiting our project at the moment. We have a total of 15 and an average of five. And then we have marketing feasibility. Will the general public accept the product? We give it a five because people with disabilities will want a better, more enhanced health system and that's what we have to offer. The total for this one was a five and the average was also a five. All right, so after the feasibilities, the next step is to look into the risk analysis. And the risk analysis is basically just an overview of how potential issues may arise and affect the final outcome. Um, doing the risk analysis, this will help us in mitiga mitigation or preventative measures to make sure the development of the final design goes as smoothly as possible. The risk analysis uh, will not only show what could go wrong, but it'll also help us determine if the idea should be continued to be developed. Uh, the different stages we took to identify these are technic technicalities, resources, economics, scheduling, cultural legalities, and marketing. So in here, we have this fishbone diagram, which basically is gonna outlay um, all the potential risks that we can foresee right now. Um, so under technicalities, we have is the technology available today um, as well as the safety. So creating the device, is that gonna cause any safety concerns? As well as, as we continue, is the technology that we require, is it something that we're gonna to have to recreate or something that hasn't even been invented yet um, to, and to all put together inside of our project? Um, our resource, we have to first make sure that we have the education to complete the steps um, to be able to create the final design as well as do we have the hardware and software to complete it. Uh, and economics, we're gonna be looking at funding. Are we gonna be able to fund the product? Is it gonna be expensive for us to create um, or is it feasible as well as, is, it, is there a beneficial uh, deviation between the sale price and the cost price? So is the cost of the product um, gonna be worth it for us to sell in the future? Are we gonna be able to make a profit or is that not worth it in the end? Um, we're also gonna be looking at the scheduling, which is creating meetup times between us and the group, as well as meeting deadlines and waiting for parts. Um, in our cultural aspect, we're gonna be looking at local impacts, global, is it globally accepted? Um, and legalities are looking at contracts, laws and regulations, existing patent infringements, um, also, this is just to make sure that as we get closer to finalizing this product, we don't run into any legal troubles of like another design that's already been out there. Um, so if we can mitigate those issues from now, we, it's the best step we can take. And lastly, marketing. Um, let's look around and figure out how much competition do we have? Um, as our target clients, are they going to accept the design at the end? All of these, um, if we can't finalize and mit mitigate all these issues, it ultimately can end in a failed end design. So the best thing to do is as you build your risk analysis is to make sure that you have more benefits than, uh, than cons. And if you do have cons, can you mitigate those issues 
So that way you can look past them and continue on with your project. If you can't, then the best thing to do is to step up to a, do something else or change the idea. So here we're able to identify um, these issues. So basically uh, at the top, these are all of our low concerns, not likely and no action needed. So we have like available technology, um, we have safety, we have funding to be able to create the project, uh, waiting for parts and existing patent infringements, uh, laws and regulation and target client acceptance. Um, so these are all things that we basically looked at and we said, okay, we looked at our patents, we've looked, we've gone back and we said, okay, like we found patents that haven't uh, been copied or looks like our project. So we're okay on that line. We looked at all the funding and so far, all those seem low concern and not really an issue. Um, we also have proper hardware. Um, these in yellow, these are gonna be like ones that we need to keep an eye out for. Could be an issue, but right now there's still low concern. Um, that's like proper hardware and software to complete the design. Basically for that, we're just gonna try and order our parts early, give us the adequate time. So if we do need to make revisions and we do need to fix something, we have the time to do so. Um, we also are trying to create uh, the deviation between sale price and cost price. So if we keep the cost of the prices down, then it allows us to sell, make a bigger profit and then it makes more sense for us to sell the product in the end. Um, we're also trying to create meetup times between our group uh, which is finding the same time that works for everybody in the week to commit to meeting times. We all go to school, we all work. It's We have to find the time that works best and we have to commit to it. Um, we have to meet deadlines. So being proactive, working ahead of time, trying to finish things ahead instead of trying to, instead of waiting would be the best thing so we can stay on top of uh, our project. Um, the local impact and the and is it globally accepted? Basically, we're going to try and discuss with our client the impacts that, that he, we're expected to make um, among our um, our target audience, and then our competition. So we research similar products and determine how we can improve on it. So we looked around to see what else is out there. So they already have like Google's and um, Alexa's, which are similar to our design. Um, but the only thing that's different is they have two independent devices, so a Google and then a secondary um, LED. Um, so ours is all in one device, and there hasn't been much um, devices out there yet. Uh, we'll discuss about those patents in a few. And then lastly, developing education. So this was a little bit more of a concern, um, just because as you get further and further in the project, you have to, your knowledge is growing, and sometimes there's things that you may not know. So as that happens, you have to make sure that you can mitigate that and stay on top of your game. So that just means working harder, educate yourself, and just develop the product the best that you can. Um, so inside of patents, so we looked around this. This section is basically to see is technologies there. Has anybody else already created this theory? It's also going to define a unique characteristics and benefit uh, of a project that has not been accomplished in previous works. This section is necessary so that a project does not breach the previous patent. Person checks all project patents and creates new breakthroughs. So we're just going to go around and look and say, hey, look, like, um, are these products already out there? Does anybody else have a patent? Are we going to get in trouble by continuing our design? So these are this is one of the patents that we found here in the United States. Uh, it's a system and method for controlling the operation of, of a device by voice command patent. Um, so this is working by a uh, speech recognition system comprising of a light element, a power control switch, and the power control switch is varying the power delivered to the light element, and a controller, a microphone, and a speech recognizer coupled to the microphone to recognize the speech input signals. Um, transmitting recognition results to the controller and speech synthesizer coupled to the controller for generating synthesized speech, wherein the controller varies the power to the light element in accordance with the regulation results received from the speech recognizer. Now, the biggest difference between this one and ours is we're using a RGB LED, uh, red, green, blue, which is basically, um, so we could change the colors. This one that they're using is mostly for just on and off and um, they're using a speech recognizer, we're using API, so it's a little bit different. Um, the other pattern that we looked, saw was a hands-free voice operator remote control transmitter. Um, this was in Europe. And this is a wireless programmable sound activated and voice operated remote control system 
which generates and transmit an appliance control signal to a selected appliance in response to a voice command and has a speech recognition for recognizing the voice command. The speech recognition circuit has a low power sound activation circuit for detecting the presence of voice signals from microphone and audio cir switching circuit for automatically switching between sound activation mode and speech recognition mode. The present invention may be pre-programmed with a universal library of codes for controlling various appliance categories and appliances produced by various manufacturers within each category. So this is using a cell phone, a little bit different. So they have an external um, IoT device, a cell phone that will do all the uh, API machine learning to take whatever the user has said and convert that signal to what they need it for. We're, all, we're gonna create a device that's all in one. Awesome. As Kier says, explained before, um, we have been researching about different kinds of patterns. Um, we make a research in, in United States and also in, in Europe. This is why we came to the conclusion to make a claim summary, which is gonna be that um, as this uh, device is an essential part of someone's life in uh, like the voice control lab that we are building, it involves major research and also works for people with disabilities. Uh, this device has been tested and to assist and provide users with a better quality of life. It goes along with science and technical advancement for, in order to make it successful to use it. In time, uh, more individuals, more people around the world um, will pay more attention to voice activated technology. Uh, the main object of our project is to build an ideal companion for someone who relies on someone at home. Uh, with the difference with, uh, with the previous uh, projects that Kier described in the, in the two previous slides, uh, our project is basically focused on the health area and the health field. Uh, that makes a big difference with, uh, with those uh, researchers, with those projects to make us to conclude in, in the non-infringement uh, uh, pattern from, for our project. Uh, from the definition of pattern, it has been concluded that our proposal is very distinct from those that we have examined in, in this pattern. Our system is a complete system that focuses on the health sector and especially on people with disabilities in the upper extremities. The framework not only touch the area of disability, but it also opens to a number of other technologies that can be very useful for further development. We then compare our concept with the current panels and also have the idea that by, re by reviewing these projects, uh, we found that there is a much greater gap between, between those patterns and the product that we are developing. We concentrate on the whole product pattern and not only on a small portion. We had advice announced then that we are not in a violation of any other pattern. Now, um, <clears throat> we found the part that uh, where we have to discuss uh, the uh, unethical dilemma because uh, everything related to technology and, and is related to to the human being, it comes out, it opens a, a, a wide perspective of uh, we are, uh, if we are in, uh, touching any ethic part of our life. Um, we can say that as a variety of technological advances are currently ongoing for the so-called smart technology to enhance the quality of life and protect the autonomy of persons with disabilities or temporary physical restrictions. There is a wide evidence that highlights the importance of artificial intelligence in the field of health. In areas such as safe aging, physical functioning, where smart devices play a highlighted role in cognitive quality of life, these individuals in, involve social inclusion. While success in transforming communities are more open to people with disabilities, they might have been observing the recent years that seen that have not paying enough attention to, to a space suite to population with cognitive uh, deficiency or intellectual disabilities. This will be corrected to take advantage of emerging technologies ability as service items to promote contact with the environment. 
talking, taking into account the much of the cognitive barriers faced by these individuals are linked to the problem they experience in recognizing the environment surrounding them. The use of virtual reality to display accessibility data and facilitate accessibility will be an example of this context. People, inclusions of public spaces. In any situation, smart devices like the one that we propose in our project helps to maintain and improve the, the potential of individuals with special needs, introducing new experiences to encourage independent living, enhancing welfare and improving protection. This population interacts and promotes social and healthy services, both at home and at the institutional level. However, its usage must be controlled as the suggestion or unnecessary and arbitrary use can cause uh, detrimental effects such as fear, tension, tension or uncertainty before what happens around oneself, encouraging the rejection of self-use. The idea of this project is to add the same ethical foundation to use the technology as a consistency of treatment basis. In example, to honor the dignity of person as human beings, to consider their individual uh, qualities to take the, their ideas, opinions, and cultural considerations into account. Technology, in other words, should be people's service. So the application can still be customized and, uh, customized and personalized. They are customized to their specification so that the person is, is the active target of their strategy. Existence is, one of, is, is the one who express her needs and desires. Now we also consider the health and safety of our device. In our design, health restrictions are primarily considered. Since this device can be used mainly in the health field and to prevent, to prevent any harm, every detail has been considered at the time of manufacturing this device. In our concept itself, when it comes to this device being acquired by a third individual, which has health restrictions, we need to ensure that this device won't risk the user with any dangerous substance that can place their health or put them at risk when purchasing the item. Commonly, any other product is not directly hazardous when they are first acquired, but by that time they become hazardous. We take this aspect into consideration as a limitation since we might assume that in the time there is a certain appearance that is more appealing to a consumer when the product might be constructed with technology materials in fact. Sustainability. Restrictions on sustainability require the lifetime of the materials of our design for the circuit to function correctly as a whole. Our model needs to have a comparable life cycle. Furthermore, each element's longevity and reliability is, are also a limitation. Our project is designed to be able to let the customer know about his or her energy consumption. So providing an image of the design is, a param is of paramount importance when it comes to the performance of our integrated smart system. To ensure that it can be operated as is consistent with the rest of the design, any component needs to be checked beforehand. Furthermore, the project itself has to be efficient and secure as well. It needs to operate correctly and to perform the particular task for which it was designed. On the, we also have considered uh, safety standards that are well known by all by the technology community, which are, are the organizations um, that real safety cultures go well beyond compliance with regulations, holding their companies to an even higher level so they can minimize staff accidents. There is a, um, a rules of a policy of organization that they can control or they can attach um, manufacturing devices to follow those policies and regulations. If precisely to, staff, uh, to, to stop and to avoid 
to avoid diseases and, and accidentally deaths. Adult voluntary protection criteria um, are regulated for these compliance driving cost centers or business innovation program that can save life and rise revenues. On these uh, um, regulations, we can find uh, uh, safety standards and IoT standards. The safety standards we, we can uh, describe on our project are based are um, following the regulations of ANSI uh, C95 directive. Uh, directive as 7323 from the electrical engineer um, uh, policy, and also uh, following all other uh, standards like the IoT standard, which are the ISO family standards, uh, some um, other manufacturer standards, and all kind of policy that can prevent any damage on, on our project. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it and gather some new information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.